All right, here are today's top stories in our What in the World segment. Number one, after Lady Justice Nzioka gave Joey Rungu the death penalty as his punishment, she decided to go on a KTN interview for who knows what reason. Here's the tip. Tunataka kubadlisha jinsi tunavyoishi. Lakini kotini kesi ambayo ni imenidhuru, hata wakati nilisema kesi za mawaji, ni vile unasikia hili tendeka hivi na hivi. Na pia nimekwambia hilo haliwezi kusababisha ama kuwa influence kwa uamuzi ambao utatoa. Mm, na una huwa kuna wakati unakofia usalama wako unasema baada ya kutoa uamuzi fulani niingie chini ya miti kidogo uh, kuna si, kitu ambacho kinakufanya ukakahisi sijahofia hata siku moja hata siku moja mm. tena mimi natembea kama raia wa hiyo nataka kusema wazi kwa sababu gani unajua kama unafanya kazi yako unaamini kazi yako unaamini jinsi umefanya hamuna mtu umedhurumu kwa kutaka kudhurumu sioni haja gani uogope kuwa raia mm. na kuwa tu pia unajua vizuri ya kwamba unajua ulinzi wetu sio lazima utoke kwa binadamu lazima uwe na imani pia mm. ya kwamba Mungu atakulinda. Mm. Kwa hivyo hakuna siku mimi nimejifungia kwa nyumba nikasema sitoki leo manake na hofia <laughs> baada ya kutoa uamuzi nitagongwa kule nje. Hamna naamini nimefanya kazi kulingana na sheria nimefanya bila ningetaka kufanya na niko sawa. Na for me it's rather strange that a judge will do a TV interview right after rendering a verdict. I've never seen any judge on TV in this country ever. This is the first time for me personally seeing or hearing such a thing. I have seen lawyers, I see Dunstan Omari all the time on TV. There's a number of lawyers who go to argue out their cases, some are pro-government, some are anti, but I am yet to see a judge. This judge doing this, there is a reason. It's very strange, but there is a reason. Number one, this judge has had a lot, a lot of blowback. Even the sentencing of Joey Irungu, she set a date, and when the date arrived, she postponed it. So people have been saying all along that this judge is corrupt. The reason she is postponing is uh, for nefarious reasons and she is likely to declare Joey Rungu innocent. There was so much drama surrounding this case and her ruling. So even after she gave Joey the death penalty, she has received a myriad of attacks all over social media and she has felt the need to go on TV, KTN in specific, to defend herself and her ruling by basically just trying to shrug her shoulder and let the people know that she sleeps well at night, she can move in public spaces, she has no fear, but the commentary has seriously affected her. I am yet to see a judge render a verdict on a very important case that is having the national attention and then immediately go on TV. That is a very strange precedent, but I believe it is the national blowback she has experienced from Kenyans that is forcing her to try and defend her name. Second story of the day, KRA, Kenya Revenue Authorities, have dropped 133 recruits because of two reasons. Number one, pregnancy, and number two, HIV. Now that has caused a lot of storm in the political scene, especially on Twitter, especially on the matter of those with pregnancy. I don't know why someone who is pregnant is considered a liability in the labor force. Maybe perhaps they are saying it might interrupt the training. Maybe they want to train them for a year and this is somebody, if they are five months in, in four months time, you lose them and you can't do a good training and give them what they need to succeed in the role that they are about to undertake. Maybe that's part of the reasoning. For HIV, I don't really know why. But it's likely they're trying to reduce the chances of spreading the disease within the force. Because, you know, you are not allowed to disclose that person XYZ is HIV positive. You can be sued for that and they'll say it's defamation. That is personal. So instead of allowing 133 recruits who are having HIV, they are opting not to hire them so that when they are having retreats in December and things like that, uh, they don't end up spreading the disease amongst the other workers who are okay. Maybe that's the reasoning, but it has caused a very big storm and people are saying it's discrimination for the pregnant ladies and it is discrimination to people with HIV that they cannot work in national government. Now I'll do my best to read your comments on this. I'm really curious to know what you people think, especially the ladies on the matter of pregnancy and those of you who are in the medical field on the matter of HIV. HIV is not a death sentence. People, they take ARVs and they live uh, very long. So nonetheless, Kiari has decided not to take any pregnant person or anybody with HIV virus. Third story of the day, a guy called Francis Muchina from Roisambu. There's always trouble in Roisambu. I don't know what's going on. Roisambu and Kisi. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something happening there. So either way, Francis Muchina from Roisambu took alcohol called Rest in Peace. I'll put the image of Francis Muchina there and this alleged illicit brew. This is a tweet from Abraham Mutai. You can see that the label of this alcohol is Rest in Peace and there is a coffin that has been placed at the front. 
Now once he used this illicit brew, it is alleged that he started vomiting blood and subsequently died. Now whoever is producing this illicit brew is the one who should be getting the death penalty, not even Joey Rungu, because this is someone who is out to kill as many Kenyans as possible. This thing has no stamp of kebs, so it has not been tested. You'll find the percentage of alcohol is 60, when 40 is the absolute highest a human being should take. Again, it has been mass produced. If one bottle has been found somewhere having killed somebody, I can assure you there is a thousand more somewhere in distribution. So these are the things DP Rigadi Gashago has been fighting with. Illicit brews, people cooking alcohol in their houses. Even where I stay, there is some two well-built houses. Very well built. I was shocked to come to discover that they are processing alcohol inside a four-bedroom mansionette in a gated community. I saw it just across the street the other day. Somebody told me they are making some alcohol from there. And as we were hanging around, truly, we saw one or two pro box living with tinted windows. You can see some movement. So these guys are out to kill Kenyans. The deputy president is after them and I am happy with the war that he's waging. Anyone who is producing substandard alcohol should not be allowed to continue producing. Well, that's all I had for you today, guys. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.